Howdy, and welcome to today's tutorial on simulating room acoustics. Whether it's your recording studio or your listening room, we all want it to sound as good as we can, and sometimes simulation is the right call, especially if you're constructing your studio from scratch like I am, and you want to be planning ahead. The best part is we're going to be using free and easy to use code. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is follow the link in the description of this video, and that should take you to this Google Colab project. And then the first thing you're going to want to do is save a copy so you can adjust this to match the dimensions of your room. Uh, so you can make a copy like that, and then you should be good to go. All right, so if you haven't used Google Colab before, it's really easy and beginner friendly. You just click on these little code blocks, and it's going to execute the commands for you. So this first command is going to install the software into your Colab project. And since I've run it before, um, this the everything's already installed, so it's really fast, but it can take up to three minutes on a new project. And then you're going to click uh, the next one, which is just going to import the packages from that software we're going to be using. Cool, cool. So this next part is where you get to customize this project to your room and your listening environment. And the user interface is basic, but it's pretty easy to use. So what you're going to do is just type in the coordinates of your room or kind of like all the corners of your room. So I had a blue blueprint for the recording studio I'm constructing in my basement. It's not this room, but it's a room I'm building. And uh, it took me less than a minute to type in all these coordinates after I just kind of looked at how long each wall is and so on. It's not too bad. Um, so let's say you're starting from scratch. Uh, you're just gonna choose one of your walls to be the origin at zero, zero, and make sure to put decimals in because we want a floating point number. Let's say you had, uh, for a basic example, a 20 by 25 room. So let's say that went out 20 feet in one direction for the next corner, and then the next corner is 25 feet across from that, um, and then you kind of complete the circle by, or complete the square by going back to uh, 25 feet across, but zero feet in the y-axis. Um, so now if we run this, we now have the new dimensions of our 20 by 25 feet room. So then you're going to enter your uh, source, which is like your speaker. Um, we'll probably have to make sure that this exists in our room by putting this, let's say uh, like 20 feet out and 23, for, yeah, I guess this needs to be inside the room. So let's put that at 19 feet. Um, kind of just choosing this randomly. Uh, let's put this one also at 20 feet, and this can be five feet away from that at four feet. Um, and then we can display the room in 2D just to make sure that it looks all right. So we probably want to center this a bit. So what would that be? That'd be moving this one over more towards the center of the room, uh, which would mean this would be at like 12 feet, 12.5. Okay, so now we've got like a centered listening environment in this rectangular room. All right, so after you have the room dimensions entered, you're ready to define the materials used in the room. Uh, so this is where you can say like, how absorptive uh, are your walls? How reflective are they? How much do they scatter and so on? And you can get really advanced in this step where you have frequency dependent absorption um, it's, it's actually pretty common for materials to absorb less low frequencies and absorb more high frequencies. So you can put those properties in. Uh, you can also base this off of real materials in their database. If you follow this link, you can see all the different materials they have, including common absorbers like mineral wool and rock wool. Uh, but in this tutorial, I'm just going to do like the most basic uh, version where we just enter one absorption value for all the frequencies and we have the same material on all of the walls, uh, but we do get a different material on the ceiling and the floors. Cool, so the first thing we're going to simulate is the impulse response because that's like the fingerprint of the room we can use to get other things like the RT60 time and get the frequency response, which is what I'm most interested in uh, for my recording studio. So the impulse response we're going to get using ray tracing. And if you're familiar with computer graphics or you're into gaming, Ray tracing is how you 
render realistic 3D images by shooting a whole bunch of simulated rays of light out, having them bounce around your environment, um, and then getting your realistic image with out of that simulation. We're doing the same thing, except we're rendering an acoustic image, and it's specifically an image of uh, impulse. So that means our source is kind of making one little click, like a snap sound at the time t equals zero. It's going to bounce around the room and get picked up by our mic. And that's essentially what we're going to get out, out of our impulse response if we run that and plot it. Like all these little samples of our impulse response are, um, you know, reflections of our original click sound bouncing around our room. But of course, they're really fast and a lot of them lie on top of each other. A lot of them phase cancel with each other. Um, and, you know, since we have absorptive materials, this eventually dies out to zero. And by the way, this impulse response is the same thing that is used in convolution reverbs. So you could easily export this impulse response and load it into your convolution reverb to get um, kind of the reverb of a simulated room. You could even simulate multiple microphones to get like realistic stereo in simulated rooms, or you could even get really creative with this and enter the dimensions of like a kick drum instead. Uh, and then you would be kind of getting the impulse response of a kick drum. Lots of creative options. Uh, I'm going to focus more on analyzing room acoustics today, but let me know in the comments if you would be interested in creative applications of this. So what the T60 or the RT60 is, is the amount of time it takes for your impulse response to decay to minus 60 decibels. So you could also think of it as if there was like a reverb describing your recording studio or your listening room, what would, be, what would be the decay time of that reverb? And in this case, it's saying, telling me that the impulse response decays to minus 60 decibels at 268 milliseconds. So that's way out here. You can't even really see the signal. It's already visually too small, um, but that's how long it takes for it to like be so dead that you would consider it like inaudible. And uh, you can look up what other mixing engineers recommend for RT60s. It's a really important thing to know about your room. All right, so the last thing we're going to simulate is the frequency response of the room. And the frequency response is obtained by taking the Fourier transform, or FFT, of the impulse response. So like I said, this impulse response is like a fingerprint. You can even use it to determine which frequencies get attenuated or boosted based off of like phase cancellation of all these delayed copies of your signal combining together. So this code gets a little bit more technical, but you probably shouldn't have to change anything unless you spot a bug, which if you do, please let me know. Um, but the only things you should really have to change is up here. I have just a couple parameters uh, and like this maximum frequency, for example, I was most interested in looking at the lower mid frequencies and making sure my room could be treated well enough for those lower mid frequencies. But if you change this to 20,000 Hertz, now you can look at a full range signal. And you can see that this untreated rectangular room has a really crazy frequency response with nulls down to like minus, almost minus 30 dB. Um, so definitely would be some problems in that room. But if we did look at the lower mids, um, which I think is more important to get right, uh, then you can see this actually only has, this rectangular room has a delta of 10, which means that there's like a maximum difference of 10 decibels. And if you're familiar with like really nice studio monitors, how they report how flat their frequency response is, is usually by saying plus or minus three over a certain range. So like a really flat frequency, a really flat monitor would have a delta of six, right? Plus or minus three is six, uh, a difference of six decibels between the, the highest peak and the lowest trough. Um, so having 10 decibels difference in an untreated room is actually not terrible, but this result was just for kind of an, an imaginary room. So now let's do a real world example and I will go back up and undo the changes I made to go back to my uh, original dimensions of my room as well as my original microphone and speaker placement. And we can also use the original materials I was using. So now what we can do is we can go up here and just click run time, run all, and we can rerun all of this uh, using the dimensions of my recording studio as it stands. 
And by the way, I am going to be making adjustments to this recording studio. That's kind of part of why I'm learning to do simulation. Um, I am going to optimize essentially these hard 90 degree angle walls. But let's first look at what my recording studio would look like if I did keep these 90 degree angled walls. Um, so we'd have a T60 of 267 milliseconds. Uh, and the frequency response has a delta of 27, which is not good. <laughs> um, so one of the first things I want to do is change my uh, room to have some angled 90 degree, or sorry, 30 degree walls, and I'm going to soffit mount my speaker. So how we're gonna do that is just drag this one corner over right here. It's gonna come out a foot and a half and same with this corner right here is gonna go back a foot and a half. And now if I run this and uh, display the room again, you can see now I've got this 30 degree angled wall and the speaker is right on it because I'm planning on soffit mounting these studio monitors. Um, so now again, if I rerun all this code, so yeah, you can see that Small little angle change makes a huge difference. Now our delta is only 11 decibels in the uh, lower mid frequencies. Um, so it went from 27 decibels difference to 11. It's a big change. I'm definitely going to be making that in that change in the construction of my recording studio. And 11 decibels is still not really acceptable for a recording studio. But remember, this is simulating an untreated room. Like our walls were only 10% absorptive, like 90% reflective, which is really not too good. Um, so, I mean, I would be confident that I could deal with this room geometry and treat it to get rid of these peaks and troughs. Um, but we can do like a small simulation. I do think it would be a little tedious to use this to like, you know, exactly plan out where all your acoustic treatment's going to go. Um, but we can get a little bit better idea. Let's say we maybe went from you know, 10% absorptive to 50% absorptive on the walls and ceilings, we can leave the floor the same. In fact, the floor would probably be more reflective than that. Um, now, if we rerun this code, we can see what that would look like. Okay, so here's the impulse response for our room now that it has acoustic treatment. And now the T60 is down to 115 milliseconds, which is probably a little too dead. Uh, most mixing engineers would try and keep it around 250 milliseconds or more, um, just because if it's too dead, it can encourage you to put too much reverb in your songs. Um, and then on other in other rooms that don't have, uh, that are more alive, then it might sound like you have too much reverb or might be a little too muddy. Um, so you may not want this much acoustic treatment, but I also think that, I mean, I'm not going to have, this was a rough approximation. I'm not going to have uh, fifty percent absorptive material everywhere on all of my walls, and I'm not going to have it all across my ceiling. Um, instead, what I'm going to do is have some acoustic treatment in very targeted areas, which I don't want to simulate. That's just too much work, and I I don't a hundred percent trust the results anyway. So basically, all I'm saying is I I'm not going to need this much acoustic absorption in my room um, to treat my problem frequencies. I'm going to need less acoustic treatment, but in very targeted, precise areas, like in the first reflections. Um, so I think I will be okay. Uh, and I can kind of take this T60 result with a grain of salt. Um, and then if we look at the frequency response, the delta is now down to 6.5. So there's, you know, a maximum decibels of minus 0 0.67 and a minimum of minus 7. That's pretty good because remember, like I said, good studio monitors are plus or minus three decibels across uh, frequent, uh, uh, you know, the audible frequency range. So this means our room right now would be kind of in line with those. Like it's it's uh, similarly bumpy to a, a good set of studio monitors. Um, I mean, the the flatter you can get it, the better. Um, but at least like this this room isn't totally making our good studio monitors worthless. Like we should. Uh, in this type of room be able to hear most frequencies pretty well. All right, so that's all I've got for you today. I hope you learned something about room acoustics. Um, it's been really helpful for me learning how to do this for the design of my recording studio. Um, one thing I'll mention is that like there is a time and a place for simulation. Uh, like I'm 
planning something that's going to take me a lot of effort to build this. Uh, if you're just trying to move your studio monitors a couple feet, um, you probably don't need to simulate that. You might as well just move them and listen to how it sounds. And if you wanted something more analytical, I'd recommend getting like a calibrated microphone and room EQ wizard and just measuring it because that's going to give you more accurate results than a simulation ever could. Um, but yeah, there's a time and a place for simulation. Like for example, in a case like mine where you're trying to plan ahead for something that's going to take you a lot of effort and it's not like I can just soffit mount my speakers, find out they don't sound good and redo that. Like that's going to take me a lot of effort. Um, so anyway, if you found this useful, uh, please give this channel a subscribe and the video a like that really helps. And I will see you next time.